What's up, everybody? Yeah, yeah, back again. It uh, feels like we've had such a long break. It does. Yeah, because we didn't. We did not have to record last week. Yeah, we recorded two episodes the week before when uh, when Ty was here with us just to make it work with his schedule. Yeah. I, of course, it didn't make sense. We couldn't drop that episode until after the TV show ended. So, but I almost suggested. I was like, man, we ought to just record. So then we'd have one in the tank. Yeah, just in case. Be, be ahead by a week. One of know. us gets the span cue or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, you never know. That's but um. Which I was thinking, were you planting till late tonight? Well, uh, well. Before we get into that, I'll tell you about that. Let's mention our our, uh, our bros uh, at Agzaga. Our, our good buddies at Agzaga dot com. Um, yeah, I actually, uh, I like, just I just hung my American flag up. Okay, you know, yeah. They, they got the promo run. They've always got all kinds of promos running. Of course, the best one is ten percent off with the Talk Dirt discount code. But uh, hey, they you need to use it quickly. Uh, you're not going to lose the ten percent, but you are going to lose the free shipping. I don't yeah. remember the date. Yeah. It may Jared, be the eighteenth. Jared, Jared said we we've done it. We, we, we they they finally they're, they're going to correct that mistake they made. <laughs> so so their mistake was y'all's gain up, up until pretty much yeah like two more days. And a bunch uh-huh. of people have bought com- the commodity jugs, as they call them, because I've had several people message me. Yeah, well, I actually talked to a guy on the phone yesterday that he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like. Um, we're going to use it to buy net wrap. I was like, well, get on there and do it right now. Um, but uh, yeah, agzaga.com, the bail net wrap, you, you buy the American flag, bail net wrap, you get the Made in USA American flag. I've got mine proudly displayed um, inside on the wall of the barn. Right under his China flag. He's got a China rising sun flag. Man, I, I actually went online and like made sure I was following the proper flag code. <laughs> um you know, and, and I do it like I even made a comment now that I've got the American flag. I was like, I need to get a Tennessee flag, yeah, uh, like, like a state flag. But you always hang it below. Lower. Yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, no, uh, no CCP flags. <laughs> and, um, we, we ain't buying that made in China stuff. No. Well, yeah, y'all use the code Talk Dirt, all one word, all caps. Exactly. Uh, Com. So you asked me about planting. All right, because it's supposed to rain like overnight tonight. Yeah. Well. I, I I got messed up because I I planted till nine last night. I just planted till I ran out of seed, and I was on a farm that's about 150 acres. And whenever I today I was like I'm gonna finish it up and I'm planting green, and I mean I'm really planting green like it's about four foot tall, and I took some cover crop. Yeah, yeah, it's oats, oats and uh, radish out there, but. Man, it uh, it planted good, and I had to crank up my down pressure a little bit to kind of punch it through there. The part that I can't I'm wrap my planting beans. Yes, yeah, yeah. planting soybeans. Uh, I was gonna be planting tonight. I mean, until we had the podcast, pretty much. But I finished that field. I was about to move, and I use a, a swivel case planter. The darn thing, I couldn't get it to swivel. I was like, what the crap? kept swiveling well it has a latch i walked back there there's this big safety latch that comes down to lock it when it's in place it's got a little like i don't know about a half inch bolt size thing that kind of sticks out and that's what the cylinder's on and the cylinder extends and it it unlatches it so then you can swivel around the freaking thing broke off so i didn't have a way to unlatch the like safety part i tried with a punch i told my wife i i almost chopped into my finger off today because um <laughs> I, I had a punch and i was like and it wasn't a huge punch and i'm back in the field so instead of driving like to the service truck to get a heavier punch i had like a long skinny punch and i just could get in there and i was prying it up and i i had some bolts in the tractor and i was getting like one size bolt well then i could pry down on that bolt and i had a bigger bolt and i was like wedging them in there and as I was, like, moving around, the thing was, like, the bolt slid out, and it was, like, bang! And, I mean, it just, like, I mean, my finger was, like, an inch away from that thing. And, I mean, it would have absolutely chopped off the end of my finger. And uh, I'm, like, man, I'm... Which, I, which finger? My freaking index finger yeah, on my you, right hand. You'd probably miss that one. I would, man. Dude, my on my on my right hand, I'm right-handed. But um, luckily, that didn't happen. But I was like, I better just stop. And I had done finish the field. But I'm going to actually 
to fix it the right way, I'd have to buy the whole uh, the latch because the thing is like made onto it. Yeah. But I'm thinking that I can drill it out because it's not a ton of pressure on it. It's literally just a little cylinder, and it just it has a spring on it that's the tension, and it just raises it up. So I'm gonna try to just drill a hole through the little piece and then run a bolt through it. I think I yeah. might can do that. So I'm on, because I mean, hell, I bet, I mean, it, it, it's no telling what the little latch probably, I mean, it's probably 300 bucks for this little stupid oh, piece yeah, of metal yeah. and it's it, nothing to it. I mean, it's not green, so it's probably, but it, but it's, it's red. I it's mean, red. It's, it's the second worst. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, which but I, how you talking about nearly losing your index finger on your right hand? I'm, I'm going to give my son a, a slight shout out. Uh-oh. We were unloading hay yesterday. Uh, my wife went and got some alfalfa over the weekend. Um, yeah, on Mother's Day, she went and got hay for. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> like, this is, well, but but it's, I couldn't go. A buddy of ours was bailing some alfalfa, but I couldn't go because I was rolling hay. Yeah. And uh, so she, she brought some alfalfa home. We just backed it under the barn, and uh, we were unloading it yesterday. My son and he was actually really helping me. He he would get them to the back of the trailer for me to take off. He started, he's like, oh, something got me. And it was kind of a delayed reaction. He's like, and he like started screaming. He's like, Some, something bit me, something stung me. And, and sure enough, his index finger on his right hand. He's right-handed. Yeah. We had a t-ball game tonight. <laughs> Hell, this was yesterday he got stung. And, um, you know, it swelled up a little bit. We gave him some Benadryl, you know, some ibuprofen, whatever. Well, this morning he woke up and like, that sucker looked like a clown hand. (laughs) Really? I'm like, oh, God. His whole hand had swelled up? Yeah. Oh, it was even like going down his arm. Oh, crap. Is he allergic? Well, I mean, I guess to an extent. I mean, it wasn't like, and even like last night, we could tell, like, I think he's running a fever. Yeah, you checked his like 107. (laughs) You're like, yeah, just put him to bed. He'll be better in the morning. But uh, (laughs) it was bad enough that like I woke up during the night, went in there and checked on him. Really? But um, yeah, we had a game tonight. His hand was still all puffy. He didn't say a word. (laughs) I, and I didn't want like the other coaches or anybody to be like super worried about it. so I didn't say a word to any of the other coaches he played through it really like his hand he's like oh, I can make a fist I'm good and I'm like alright hell yeah man did they <laughs> but, give him like antibiotics or something no you, I just gave him a steroid gotcha but still like you put his hand side by side you're like yeah dude that ain't normal <laughs> But yeah, it made me think when you, when you were talking about your index finger. Like, yeah, he got stung right on his index finger on his right hand. Wow, that hurts. Yeah, they yeah. getting stung on my fingers. It didn't feel good. Well, and the bad thing about that, the swelling has nowhere to go in a finger. Yeah, like it's just I mean, you don't have it. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah, he's gonna live. Which he was when I was getting ready to leave to come over here. He was sitting there and we were eating some pizza and he was like, "What am I gonna do with the podcast?" <laughs> I was like, well, I was like, we'll have to not do it so late one night. So, yeah, um, have to get the kids on. But anyway, so yeah, so you were you were planting this evening until that happened. Yeah, I, I was going to move. I'm I'm down to about 460 acres. Yeah, I I was figuring it up. I so I'm I'm about I'm nearly 70 percent of the way there. So I feel pretty good now because we do have some rain coming in tonight potentially, which I don't think they're predicting very much. Like from what I'm hearing. I mean, Dad was like, "I Todd Demers said a, a a tenth." Um, really? Yeah. Well, it's gonna almost kind of piss me off. That's all it does. Cause just I, enough to mess you up in the hay. Well, because I I would have cut hay yesterday to bail this weekend, but I was like, "Well, can't cut hay." Well, then it's it's actually well, then I'm I'm appreciative because most likely now it won't rain much. Oh yeah, no. If I had cut hay, it it, it would have rained, rained like two crazy. And a half inches, yeah. Yeah. It would have washed it away. But um. Yeah, I'm I'm appreciative then. Hey, what are you drinking? I, well, and I, we need to back up even further because we didn't record last week we missed the birthday episode yeah yeah so and this is nothing oh, i wonder what you were I, brown bagging I, I, I asked them i was like y'all don't have any george t stag do you and they're like no <laughs> jeez if you had come in here with that i'd have been like damn i'm out i'm gonna have to really step up my game for bobby lee's birthday it's actually something i'd never seen um, oh hell! I I don't know that I've ever seen that. It, it's it looks a bu- awesome. It's a buffalo trace. Okay, um, but it's actually and I I was in a hurry today. We were running around like chickens with our head cut off. Um, Chris Stapleton is a co-founder of this brand. It's, okay, what it's Traveler Traveler, Traveler whiskey? Um, but yeah, it, it's a buffalo trace. Um, well, dang! I wouldn't have poured me anything if I. Well, I saw you already had one poured. Um, but yeah, Harlan Wheatley, who's the. I guess he's the same master distiller. Yeah. Buffalo Trace. I almost grabbed, they had one bottle of Eagle Rare, and I was like, well, I know Logan will, will, will like that. But then I, I was like, you know what? Dude, I love trying some new stuff. I, th- me too. And so I was like, that's cool. I, I like it. That. 
Yeah. I like it, man. It's not like a it's a real simple design, but you can like see but through it you can see the map of the that that's cool, man. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah I would yeah, have to, it was this thirty three? Thirty three. Thirty three revolutions or what do they say, revolutions around the sun. Thirty three times around the sun. What's you know, and, and I'd text you or whatever, talked to you last week on your birthday and it, it's like yeah, birthdays thirty one through thirty nine are all the same. Yeah. So I, they're just I, they're just yeah. Honestly, I have there's I have caught myself a couple times having to actually do the math oh, to remember. I, I had to do that the, my whole way through my thirties. <laughs> then of course, you get forties. You know, it's like, oh wow, yeah, I'm forty now. But um, yeah, it was your dad that told me he's like, yeah, he's like, you'll turn thirty and the next day you'll be forty. Yep. And that that was my thirties went by in the blink of an eye. So. Well, and man, you know, which you got kids, you see it too. I mean. That's how I'm like, man, kids are six years old. It's like, hey, we just brought them home. You know, like uh, it does. And that's what dad always said. He was like, it feels like it takes forever to get to 18. And then you kind of get to 21. He said, and then you go 21 and then you're 30. He said, and then you're 30 and then you're 40. He was like, you start skipping like, it's almost like 10 year jumps. That's what I saw somebody. And this was, this was a pretty good analogy. I'm surprised I'd never seen it before. It said, life is like a roll of toilet paper. Um, the closer you get to the end, the faster it goes. Well, yeah, that is true. And I was like, dang, like that's so damn simple. But like, yeah, like, yeah, like, like, yeah, my, my, my thirties went by a whole lot faster than my twenties did. Yeah. You're and yeah. Yeah. My teens felt like it took, you know, oh yeah, 80 years. You, you know? feel like a teenager forever. Yeah. It's like, I can't wait till I turn 16 and can drive like, oh, that'd just be so great. And like the days drag by and then. I wonder, you know, like I turn eighteen and I can buy some skull. Yeah, and now you can't even do that no more. Twenty-one years old to buy tobacco. Yes, for real. Yep. Yeah, twenty-one years old. You know, the, the libertarian in me says that's bullshit. Well, you know, I I started when I was thirteen, so I was bucking the system, anyways. Well, hey. man, that goes back to the whole like you're old enough to serve the country and die. Yeah, you hey. can't even smoke a cigarette. Well, and, and it was always a you can't have a drink, and uh, and now it's, yeah, you can't even. Can't even put a dip in. Take a dip. Well, that gum. I, I, when did they change the age? I don't know. I, I just yeah. I noticed that one day in the, the store because yeah. I've been and I you know what I think I've quit chewing. I have found something that I like much more. I've started dipping them rogue pouches. What are they? Just the nicotine. They're like Zins. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you and Drew were talking about them. I think I called y'all pussies at the clinic or something because. I still was chewing. I, I do feel a little bit like a bitch whenever I put a Zen in. Yeah. And then somebody over next to me throwing in a big, you know, wad of Copenhagen. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Man, I put in, I went and bought two or bought a can. They have a tobacco flavored Rogue. Yeah. And it tasted terrible. But they had a. Uh, uh, These Zens come in every day. What are those, three? Yeah. All right. See, that's what I, I bought. The In the wintergreen is what I bought. Actually, I took oh hell! You ain't even got none in there. I put my last one in while I was out there coaching. Team. <laughs> oh, um, but uh, I bought the wintergreen rogue, and man, man, they were awesome. And I, I put two in because they're three milligrams, so I put two in. The first day I did them, because I I have a big bag. I bought uh, Stoker's chewing tobacco. They yeah. got the moonshine blend. Yeah. Man, I got a huge bag of it in the armrest in my tractor. Well, I bought these uh, rogues, and I got in there, and, and I had to try them, and I put one in, and I was like, oh, this is nice. And I, I left it in, which I spit because it's it kind of burns when you swallow. So, yeah, with the Zins, I don't. This is really, yeah. I like it, which I'm I'm doing it almost like, uh, like I, I move it around my mouth all the time. Do you yeah. leave yours alone? For the most part, I try to like consciously. All right, I'm gonna put this one in on the other side, or um, you know, just because I'm like I don't want to. Yeah. Create a spot there. But, I move it around to generate spit. Yeah. Well, and I'll move mine around like just with that pouch. You know, yeah. And play with it, but it just does a weird burn and kind of makes my gut like feel a little weird when I'm like just swallowing it. So I yeah. I do spit a lot with it, but uh, man, yeah, I I did the three. And then I was like, man, I, I bet you the first day I did them, I dipped eight of them. Um, yeah. And then I finally just, I put two in at one time, and I said, I felt good on the tractor. Man, I was like, man. Well, that's what I can tell the difference between the threes and the sixes. I haven't tried any sixes yet. Well, I, the only time I have is, because I was like, all right, when I when I started doing it, I was like, I'm just going to stick to the threes. 
and then one day because I've gotten to wear the winter greens on I mean I've it's, done just about all of them awesome. but winter greens are one I like and all they had was sixes so I was like well give me a six now, you can tell the difference you know? yeah well I guess it'd be like when I put in two yeah, yeah. I was uh, which one of my buddies he puts in two sixes now that could get expensive yeah yeah he puts in two sixes now I, mean, I guess if you're using it because I'm kind of going about it the opposite way like I hadn't dipped back in years. Yeah. I chewed it a little back. I admit it. I don't know. I just... A little pick me up. If I'm honest with myself, I have been chewing tobacco consistently now for about a year. <laughs> I had been yeah. pretty much back. Not many days went by that I didn't have at least one, most of the time two, sometimes three Mainly chaws. Mainly stokers. No, actually, America's Best is my main one that I go to. Red Man. Red Man. Red Man. Yeah. Uh, but I, it's so expensive. I went into the corner discount tobacco store up here, and they had that Stoker's. And it was it's a huge bag, and it was like 10 bucks. Yeah. And that small bag of, a, of Red Man is like $14. Yeah. So you get – and the chew is actually – man, Stoker's chew is good, man. It's like really moist. and I just – the only thing I miss with like doing rogue, I like spitting. I like spitting black spit. Like there's just yeah. something about you know. I, and when I chew tobacco, I mean I actually chew it. Like I have it over here in the oh, side, yeah. and I'm chewing it, and I'm like I spit, but uh, I don't know. It, there is just there is. I mean, and again, this is why like, you know kids shouldn't be doing it. But there's a cool factor to having a big old chaw. It head, is, you know, and just a big old spitting. Yeah, it is. It um, is. I used to do it. it I got to where I would all like something about when we were duck hunting. Like I just felt like I needed to throw one in. Yeah. And when I was still playing like uh, adult softball, like <laughs> yeah. we're after playing softball, which it got to where there was a lot of drinking going on there too. Yeah. Yeah. And then you might swallow some chew or something. Well, uh, there's just a lot of dudes crushing beers in the dugout and stuff like that. <laughs> and so yeah, it was just yeah, and, and, and that that kind of I don't know. I'm not gonna go down that route. <laughs> all, but, well. There was a reason I quit playing men's league. It, there you go. Well, it was a rowdy crowd. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the rogues have been my thing. Now we now we got a few, got a couple of emails here. Yeah. Before we get into yeah, our yeah, because for our our audience that has been so fed up with farmer wants a wife, hey, you 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 got your wish. We're back on track. The show has ended. Um, not that we won't ever talk about it again. Yeah, we'll leave you a little teaser on that, but but you're safe today. You don't have to worry about it today. All right, uh, here's an email from Darren. Darren says, "Hey, gentlemen, just want to say I love the show. Long time listener, first time writer. I found the tractor cade of 1979 very interesting and thought that another neat story along those lines would be the Bundy standoff. That would yeah. be a good one to talk about." I'm yeah. going to make a note of that. Clive and Bundy. Yep. I believe that was in Oregon. It was, yep. That would be a good one. He said, love the show and keep up the great work, gents. Darren, we appreciate you writing in. Highly encourage you guys to email us. Shoot us an email. You go to our website, talkdirtpodcast.com, contact page. You can email us on there. Really urge you to do it. Email us any topics, questions you have. Uh, just tell us that you enjoy the show, whatever. But, uh, Darren, we appreciate you writing in. We will absolutely do a Bundy standoff because that's just right up our alley. All right, the other one comes from Bryson. This is the dude that loves Farmer Wants a Wife. Okay. No, <laughs> so, sorry, Bryson, <laughs> yeah. about, about this episode. Yeah. yeah. Now, he wrote in, he said, just wrapped up the Tractor Kate episode and just wanted to pass on a little info in regards to the inflation numbers you quoted. All right, he said... <clears throat> Our always truthful and trustworthy government has changed the metrics on how CPI and PPI are measured over the decades. For example, if you look at the CPI today with the 1980 metric, the inflation rate is around 12% right now and peaked at around 18% last year. If you look at it with the 1990 metric, we are at around 8% and peaked last year around 15%. As Bobby Lee pointed out, the government controls the media and therefore the narrative. As it has been since they killed Kennedy and forced Nixon out of the White House, the narrative and information is bullshit. 
And don't get me started on the illegal aliens and massive money laundering scheme that is get, is U.S. is us giving money to everyone, all at the expense of the approximate forty eight percent of us paying all of the taxes in the country. Scary times ahead, fellas. Drink a bourbon for us all. We are doing exactly that. <laughs> yes, we are. Which what are you drinking tonight? Oh yeah, you uh, mentioned that Blue Note. Oh, our buddy's just right down the road from us. Yep, got some Blue Note. Marcy got me a bottle for my birthday. So Blue Note, what are you on the Knob Creek? You know, and that was one of they, they had a special Blue Note there on the shelf too, and that was one of my like. But as I was trying to decide which one I was going to buy, yeah, I actually poured the Knob Creek, the the single barrel select, polishing the knob tonight. <laughs> Yep. Bobby Lee likes the chicken cock and the knob. Always going for the knobs or the cocks. <laughs> I, <laughs> guilty as charged. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bryson, appreciate you writing in, man. Uh, yeah, the government is full of shit, and we trust them even less farther than we can throw them. Like, we have no trust for the well, government. Hell, as bloated as our government has become, you couldn't, shit, you, you can't throw them at all. You know who I talked to? Or I, well, I won't mention the guy's name, but I, I talked to a guy that is a Navy SEAL. Not, and it's, I'll preface, this is not uh, anybody local. So if anyone's trying to put pieces together, this is not it's, a local it's not, guy. not one that may have worked with you before. Yes, no. No. Um, so this dude, I met him actually through my other podcast that I used to do. And uh, he, me and him have, have chatted back and forth on Instagram. He is still currently active, and uh, but he's about to retire as well. But he was talking, we were talking about politicians, and uh, he mentioned Dan Crenshaw because he said he served with Dan. And uh, I said... Uh, One-eyed McCain? Yeah. I said, dude, what? I said, that guy sucks, man. I said, what a disappointment. And he goes, yeah, Dan, is he sucks. And I said, was he like that when he was in the teams? And he said, no. He said, not at all. And he said, and actually, he said he always told us he was going to go to Washington. He would be a martyr for us. Like, I mean, you know, he was like, he had good intentions from the way he, what he said. And so he's like, man, he got to Washington and literally just immediately became a Washington, you know, pawn. Well, and that's kind of always been my somewhat theory on it is – I think you probably do have some people that get in there and they're like, yeah, I'm going to be the one that's different. Like I'm going to be the one, you know, the thousands of politicians before me, but to, 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 to get to that level, you know, to get elected to Congress, certainly Senate, whatever you, you have to, you sell your soul basically. Yeah. You're owned. You're owned. Yeah. You cannot get there. Uh, you know, with our current setup, without ha- having an enormous amount of money, you know, to fund a campaign or whatever, and in order to do that, you've got to have donors, and all yeah. this is it's a pay to play. Yeah, you have these, you know, groups that 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 donate like, oh, hey, Dan, we, we'd love to. He's like, oh, yeah, this is fantastic. They're giving me this money. This is great. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have a legit shot to win this congressional seat. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they come knocking on the like, hey, Dan, you remember that, you know, $2 million check we wrote to your campaign? Yeah. It's time to pony up. Yep. And uh, and so I, I just always felt like, yeah. And, and then it's just, and then you, you compromise yourself once you're like, all right, I'll, I'll support this thing that I know maybe is not in the best interest of my constituents or whatever. Yeah. But because, hey, th- they paid my way to get here. I wouldn't be here without those people that, that, that paid me. And then, and then it just snowballs from there. And before you know it, yeah, you're just like every one of the rest of them. Yep. Yeah, well, I think a lot of guys get in it with good intentions. Well, I mean, I even um, I see it not so much as he's been bought, um, but you know, Trump is really trying to fundraise really hard right now. And I mean, this guy's a billionaire, but he's up against you know the Democratic machine that is. I mean, God, it is in, is all kinds of billionaires that are pumping money into that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, man, it's like we, we have such a messed up system that, like, you it, buy it, your way in. It kind of comes down to because I mean, a lot of times when they're predicting who's going to win this election, well, this candidate has spent this much, this candidate has only spent this much. Well, whoever spends the most is probably going to get elected because they're yep. going to have more commercials, more newspaper, full page ads, whatever BS. 
that it takes to get elected. Like, man, that, that's just messed up. That that's it's not about who the best candidate is. It's who can fundraise the best. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. no, that, that's who, crap. Who has the biggest donors backing them? That that's who's really pulling the strings. And I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Trump and Biden are going to debate. Did you see that? I saw like the rumblings of that. I, 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 They've I'm, set a date. I, I'm glad they will debate, but I'm. I'm just curious to see how this goes. I am too. I mean, of course, I think even a lot of the Democrats, you know, 90% of us are watching it. You know, obviously, people on the other side of the aisle are, you know, holding their breath that there's not going to be a train wreck. <laughs> yeah. And we're all just sitting there like waiting to, waiting laugh. to see the train wreck. And, and, like, I don't, there's not a single sane person that has paid any attention to our president over the last what three and a half years yeah that thinks he is of sound mind oh yeah like, like no if you think he is of sound mind you're either delusional or you have not paid any attention yeah and it is amazing how sometimes he seems you're like whoa they I, you will never ever ever convince me that they don't juice have, him up have a cocktail right that they they <laughs> they hot, hot but whatever it is they can't like he can't run that hot all the time. Yeah, his heart would explode. Yeah, and, yeah. And I mean, there, and I've heard experts that that understand kind of that, that that have said the same thing. Like there is no doubt that they, I don't, I don't know if it's like Adderall that type of stuff that makes you focus or or, or whatever it is, but they and, and yeah, they can do that. You know, if it's only one or two debates, like yeah, they can. Oh yeah, yeah. Detox him for a few weeks, <laughs> and you know he, he, he's basically a vegetable. When they walk him in there and they hop him all up, and all of a sudden he's, he's like, "Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, all right." And he sounds like you're like, "Whoa, this guy's coherent." Like, yeah, if I didn't know any better, if I wasn't actually listening to his words and where he's spewing a bunch of bullshit, like he he's he's at least coherent, you yeah. know, kind of thing. But uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's where I'm kind of the cynical side of me is like, yeah, whatever you know we'll see like, we'll see how many people's minds will those debates change i mean yeah if it's just a total train wreck where he pulls like a mitch mcconnell where he like literally <laughs> can't even speak <laughs> and, but but even then oh the people still will vote for him if, against if, trump just because they hate him if you take yeah the 80 percent of the country and you're like 40 percent of people are going to vote for him no matter what yeah 40 percent of people are going to vote for but vote for trump no matter what and it may have been like more like 45 for each of them and so you got such a tiny window or narrow sliver in between. And then, like, are those people really paying attention? Like, yeah. are, are they going to be swayed by that? And it, I mean, again, the, the election was so close last time, you know, in just a few swing states. Like, yeah, it may take just a tiny little, yeah, blip to, to swing it the other way. But, yeah, yeah, I don't know. We'll um, see. All right, I, I John. Feel like I'm closer and closer to just, you know, m moving off somewhere and. <laughs> declaring myself a sovereign citizen uh, yeah I, i'm not far behind you um, john writes in how are y'all doing today y'all are doing a great job with the podcast and youtube i am a fifth generation farmer looking to purchase a first generation farm using the va loan i've talked to my local fsa agent and he said growing up on a family farm is a gray area to meet the fsa requirements so i'm going the va route because i am a veteran bobby lee i've First, I do want to add in there, if you got the right FSA agent, they could they could get it, get you around that. I would almost, I mean, I don't know what the VA. Yeah, as being a, a new beginning farmer. Yeah. So so he's fifth generation, but he's wanting to branch out on his own to become. That's what it sounds to like. Start his own first generation. Okay. Yeah, that's but what it sounds like. When he said like. he was going to buy a first generation farm, I was like, don't be buying out those first generation guys. Yeah, no, I said. No, that, that's not what he meant. That's yeah. the gist I get. He's buying like his first, first farm, kind of branching out. Oh, yeah. um, but. What I was going to say is, I, and again, I don't know what the VA loan, what the parameters are of that, but the FSA loan, if you got the right agent, you could kind of be like, look, what if, I mean, I can tell you, what if you could get your family, whoever, to basically write a letter of recommendation saying you have been in the operation for three years to meet the requirements? Because, I mean, honestly, that's pretty much what we did to start. Yeah, that's what I did because when I... When my wife and I bought our first farm where we live now, um, that was, would have been like December of nine and like it went over into January of 10. So that was Obama. 
Um, hope and change, baby. Um, <laughs> but one thing our agent said, he's like, hey, it's like one great thing about Democrats is they love to give away money. Yeah. And uh, he, he, so he said, Get, getting approved for this with a Democratic, you know, administration in office. And so, because they wanted you to have like three years of a Schedule F like yep. tax returns to apply to begin a, a younger or newer beginning farmer. And I'm like, well, I can't become a farmer. Start yeah. farming until I have land. I mean, I guess they expect you to start off just renting for a few years. Yeah. And, and, um, but yeah, it was an easy workaround. They're like, yeah, just write a little like, it's like, I don't know if you call it like an essay, but like how you have, even though you have not been the one like, you know, running the operation, how you grew up like in the, and yeah, it was, it was yeah. all a formality. Like it, that, it was pretty simple. That's why I, I would talk to your agent and I, I would mention that again, that's if you, I mean, the VA loan might be awesome, but uh, if, if you think you could get a better rates with the FSA agent, I would talk to them and, and I would ask them about that because they can do that. Yeah. Now, I will say I have worked with some agents in the past that are like, by the book, 100%. They're not going to budge on anything. And that guy may be that way, this person you're dealing with. But I would check there. But he says here, he says, Bobby Lee, I've heard of farmers grazing cattle on alfalfa in the fall. What are your thoughts about this? My concern would be bloat, but I don't know how to check for that. Keep your pecker hard and your powder dry. God bless. It's a good ending, man. God bless. Yeah. Appreciate the questions and writing in, man. Thank you. Never um, hesitate to do so. So, so I don't know a great deal about alfalfa, even though I just talked earlier about alfalfa. Um, <laughs> we buy our alfalfa um, just a little for the horses. Ooh, I don't know on grazing it at all. Um, I mean, at all. Uh, I, the, the the very little bit of alfalfa that's around here is absolutely 100%, you know, cut for hay. It, yeah. It's definitely not grazed. Um, and, and, of course, you know, w w with clover, you know, another legume, um, you do have to worry a little about bloat with cattle. I'll tell you, it's never been, and we have a lot of clover on some of our farms and some of our pastures. It's never been a real issue for us and i and i and i may have a problem tomorrow so i hate to even brag or say that we haven't had an issue but i i, I really could not say about alfalfa yeah um you know i don't know like yeah i, I guess he's assuming like after you've got because it's so valuable around here and like around here nobody is feeding it to cattle well we don't have any dairies and i, I know in some parts of the country you know they'll they'll use it in dairy rations um just your horse folks and, and even the beef cattle in certain places i watch some other channels on youtube that that round roll their alfalfa every bit of alfalfa around here is in small square bales sold to a premium equine market um i know my what my wife paid per bale for small squares last weekend there's no way in hell i'm feeding that to a cow at that price <laughs> um uh you know the the a bale that, that's like stacked on the ground and maybe gets a little moldy gets thrown out to the cows that's it <laughs> that's their only taste of alfalfa they're getting but um yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I cannot, yeah, answer that, you know, not fully. Yeah. Well, man, like you say, uh, you know, that'll be something. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely don't know. I can't give you any guidance there. But but we will keep our peckers hard and our powder dry. You're uh, damn right. you damn right. So, do we appreciate not you. While, not while we're just sitting here. That would be kind of gay. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I hope there's no hard peckers in here right now. <laughs> um, but appreciate you writing in. Uh, don't hesitate. Again, that's the last of our little questions we got right now. Oh, uh, I got some other right in. That, man, see, this is where I, my, I just want to ask you to email me because it's hard for me to keep track of other places that people write in. But we did have some people write in on Spotify. I, and do comment on Spotify because I do read these. So our last episode, you know, we gave the uh, the, like, mount rushmore stuff uh and somebody i don't even remember mentioning taylor swift who meant did you mention her well we were in a text group well that was today but i'm on the episode did we mention her i don't think i did i don't say i don't know I, I was totally joking definitely in our i was text gonna say group. if i can assure you if either one of us mentioned taylor swift as being influential or in the mount rushmore it was purely a joke well, you know if, if you just want to say influential it would probably be a mostly a negative way. Yes. But um, 
Yeah, she definitely negatively influenced country music. She was never country. This person said Taylor Swift is a dude. You know, hey, she ain't, she ain't got a whole lot going going for her. She built like a two by four. Yeah, but say not a lot of curves. Uh, Kelsey writes in. Kelsey is the dude that uh, <laughs> that when I did the dumbass of the well, week. It's not Travis Kelsey, is it? We were just talking about. Gosh, Taylor it Swift, is, man. It? Sorry, Travis. No, no. Uh, he, he's a big fan. Yeah, he probably is. Well, I don't know. Travis, I think, you know, that's Mr. Pfizer. I don't know that we would align real well with Travis. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, the funny memes are like, either way, he's getting his heart broken. <laughs> yes. W- yeah. W- whether it's the myocarditis or just, just Taylor. Taylor writing a song about breaking up with him. Yeah. Dang, that's good. That is good. Uh, Kelsey was the one when I mentioned the, the dumbass of the week. He was the guy that had mentioned he was going to spray glyphosate, and the guy was like, where are you going to haul your grain? So he said, glad I could help you with the DA of the week with the laughing thing. He said his country Mount Rushmore would be George Strait, Merle Haggard, Robert L. Keene, and Pat Green. Robert L. Keene, yeah. I don't know if I've ever heard Robert L. Keene. Oh. What songs do he sing? Robert L. Keene, he, he's a Texas song. He, he was more famous, I believe, as a songwriter. Um, I don't. I'm not recognizing the name. So I'm and, not a country guy. Like and I said, I'm, I'm not nearly as well versed as a lot of people out there. Now, my favorite country music, maybe my favorite, just Christmas. Rascal song, Flats. No, no, no. My favorite song, Montgomery Gentry covered it. Um, Merry Christmas from the family. Oh yeah, that yeah. was originally Robert Earl King. Okay, I and got I, you. I, and his version. I mean, Montgomery Gentry's great, but. Um, Oh, he, yeah, there's people right now, like, screaming at the radio that I'm not able to name, like, some actual Robert Earl Keane songs. But, no, he, he's very well known, probably more as a songwriter than as a singer. Okay, um, gotcha. But, I, I mean, yeah, um, that's, uh, which I guess Pat Green would probably fall into that category, too. Yeah. I think he became more not, more of an artist himself later on, but I believe, he, he, again, more as a songwriter. But, gotcha. Well, Merle. Merle and George, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, we could have. That's why Mount Rushmore is so hard because you got to. There's just, so many. It's just, just but so yeah, many. Like I could come up with 25 that I think would be up for debate, but you got to narrow it down to just four. Yep. Yep. All right. And then Nick, uh, thanks, Kelsey. Appreciate the comment. And that's why, in my defense, because we were in that text trip, <laughs> I narrowed mine down to just like my formative, like childhood years, like of the the late 80s to like mid 90s. Yeah. Like that, that was the, yeah. the era I focused on. So I was like, yeah, if you, if you just make it like country in general, like, that's like, yeah, like you have to go back for, well, and, and I just made it bands that I actually listened to. Yeah. I was like, who did I actually listen to? Um, but Nick writes in, he said, thanks for the shout out classic. Uh, oh, he's the one I, I guess that asked for the Mount Rushmore. He said his classic rock top five is Metallica, Def Leppard, ACDC, Alice in Chains and Guns and Roses. Now I'll, I'll refrain from giving you shit for putting Def Leppard in the top five. But yeah, I, after we had that conversation, I was listening, I was like, man, Guns N' Roses would have been a pretty good one. Guns N' Roses, they're they're good. They're definitely good. Uh, like I said, he's got, got my Alice in Chains in there. That's Alice in Chains is like in my top three favorite bands of all time. But Def Leppard. Def Leppard to me is almost like the Coldplay meme where it's like, you know how I know you're gay? Because you like Coldplay. And that's kind of how I feel about Def Leppard. Now, I, I like a couple. Well, I, honestly, I'm going to be real. If any Def Leppard song comes on, I change the radio. So I guess I can't even say I like them. But I won't give you too much shit there, Nick. <laughs> Appreciate you. Appreciate you writing in. The rest of your list, very solid. Metallica, ACDC, Alice in Chains, Guns N' Roses. And, I mean, there is... No question about it. Def Leppard is a very famous band, so they've obviously yeah. had good success. My, my and I, I mean, I, I don't hate Def Leppard, um, but my wife, you know, like all these like retro shirts are becoming like in vogue. Oh, she got a Def Leppard oh, shirt. Got, she has a Def Leppard T-shirt. She wears. I was like, what's one song they record? <laughs> she's like, I don't know. Oh gosh, like, no! Like, like, you're wearing a. She, but she just thinks the shirt looks cool. Oh like, it's man! It's like a vintage, like rock and roll shirt. Yeah, like yeah, it does. I have. It looks good on you. It looks even better laying on the floor. Right? Yeah, there you Taking go. Yep. But uh, 
you have like you can't wear the shirt if you can't name a single Man, song that, that is recorded. That is a, like a pet peeve of mine. I've seen like girls. I'll be going in like Nafis, and it'll be like a sixteen-year-old girl in there, and she'll have a Slayer shirt on, and I'm like. I know damn well this chick don't know freaking Slayer. Like, it's just become, like, a cool You'll vintage. You'll make a reference to her, and she'll look at you like you're a dumbass. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, you know, come on. Like, it was either Slayer or Pantera. I can't remember which shirt. I Because I saw a girl in Nafies with a Slayer or Pantera shirt on. And, yeah, I wanted to be like, do you have you ever even heard Cowboys from Hell or Cemetery Gates? Like, I want to be like, come on now. Like, I bet you, I bet you, if I played the most, I could play "Raining Blood," which is like the most famous Slayer song. I bet you they wouldn't know it. Yeah, I mean that that is a yeah, that's a pet peeve. That is a pet peeve. Man. That's like when I see uh, back when I was in high school, and it would be I'd see some dude had no affiliation to farming at all, and he'd have on like a John Deere shirt. And I was like, man, come on, man. Like, and he, like, he was like a huge city slicker. I don't know. And maybe he had oh, farm yeah. dreams. I'm not trying to crush the guy's dream. No, actually, no, I, they, they didn't have farm dreams. This guy didn't. If you dream of being a farmer, then by God, wear your John Deere shirt. But, well, that's the whole thing where you know, John Deere went so damn mainstream. It you know, did. It, everybody had a John Deere license plate and a John Deere, you know, green and yellow hat. That and cotton. The the cotton thing, you see everybody that, with that, cotton. That was big around here, yeah. Yep. Uh, now, we got a message here on Facebook that I was going to read that I just thought was, was pretty cool. I'm reading it on air. I haven't responded here yet. This is to Aaron. He said, was wrapping up hay until 1 a.m. This was on Tuesday. Dang, man. He was that is that's hustling in the hay field. Did he buy his wrap from magzaga.com? He did not say. He did not say here. Aaron, let I'm, me know. I'm assuming he's a smart man, and he did. We're going to say you did. All right. So he said, was wrapping up hay until 1 a.m., got to listen to the Ty interview. Well done. I would have never in a million watched a show like this, but because of your podcast, it turned into a family event. We'd block out time each night and watch the show as a family. <laughs> that's so, that's so, awesome. See, Fox needs to start advertising with us. They do. It, it, it's time they, they, they kind of... You throw us a little commission our way. I'm telling him here. Yeah, I'm telling him here. We just responded to this on air. Um, man. We, we have broadened their audience by like 14 people. I guarantee <laughs> you more testosterone has gone to their show from our channel than probably oh, just probably about anywhere. Oh, probably because I imagine they were starting with zero. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that, it's, yeah, that's cool, man. But it is. It's, it's cool, man. There you go, Aaron. You got. I'll, I'm. I'm just. I just told you we respond on there. So appreciate you writing in, guys. Anywhere, write into us. I'm sure we got some on Instagram, but uh, the email is where it's easier to keep up. You mentioned Facebook. Kind of brought something up to me. I I, I just sold my F two fifty yesterday. Oh, your black one? Yeah. Really, man. I I, I woke up this morning with like a. A bad feeling in my gut. For Man, fun. can't believe you sold that truck. By golly, I don't know that I'll ever post anything on Facebook again. I, I if you have kids in the vehicle, you might want to go ahead and, and mute me. <laughs> like, there's nothing but just a bunch of cock sucking assholes on Facebook. I, I now know why, because every I do not even have a Facebook account. I, I've had my wife's log in, so I can get on there and look at Marketplace. You know, you, I always notice like some people in, the, in their like description of their item, like they're just damn near like brutal with shit. But I know why. It's because you post something for sale. There's a bunch of damn dickheads that comment and bullshit. Like I went back and forth with the guy. I was like, all right, I'm I'm just this is how I'm entertaining myself today. <laughs> I was like, he offered me about two thirds of what I had the truck listed for, and I already the first guy that even responded to me was great, great deal. It's actually um, uh, a relative of former guest of the podcast, William okay. Lee, who yeah. bought it. So I'm like, at least somebody bought it that I know because I, I seriously like I have sold equipment before in trucks. And I'm like, oh god, I'm glad I don't know who who, who that person was that bought that because yeah. it's a wreck rolling out of here. Now that <laughs> truck, like. But anyway. Hell, I ain't seen that truck in forever. 
Well, that's the thing. It, it just sat there, and the reason we traded it, my, it, it was probably time because my wife was driving it across the country and stuff on horse shows, and it, eleven year old truck with one hundred thirty five thousand miles on it, not ancient for a diesel by any means, but, um, my mom's truck has like twelve thousand miles. Yeah, and she decided she got a bigger horse trailer needs a one ton, so she traded in her. Oh, three did you get a Duramax? And that's what I said. I was like, oh, I don't right. like, I don't like the direction I went, but <laughs> I, I'm about ten years newer and about 120 thousand less miles. <laughs> he got, got, came to the light. He came to the light. <laughs> I, I I had three Ford pickups at one time. I have zero now. Yeah. Man, um, that's but, uh, our, the gayness is left. But, yeah, so I was like, well, yeah, I can't keep this truck. Because I had that truck, it was, you know, EGR, Delete, the Tune. Yeah. I mean, you helped me do all that. And, like, the truck was set up exactly like I wanted. Allegedly. He's not admitting to any of this. I don't own it anymore. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll also go ahead and admit, now that I don't own it. Yeah, no, no, I don't want to admit that. Um, Did you run red fuel in it? No, I never did that. Um, or was it your tags? Uh, I was going to say something about the tags. I'll go ahead and say <laughs> it on here. La- last, you need to share this. Well, I, <laughs> the, the, the tags on it, which when the guy drove it off, I was like, yeah, those tags went out in 17. <laughs> that's, like, that's like seven years. <laughs> I, I'm not going to brag about that too much. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. Um, Jeez. Yeah, that truck's driven, been driven <laughs> and it stays parked a lot too because it pretty much just pulls a horse trailer but it drives all around the country pulling a horse trailer yeah which at that point you can't see the tags but um anyway but, um, that's yeah, true I hadn't put tags on it in seven years um got one ticket for anybody that's, doing, that's like oh it's dumb got one $150 ticket and avoided paying seven years worth of tags a lot less than what you'd have paid $120 a year yeah and, and when I got that ticket and I tried to put tags back on it they're like well you gotta back pay I was like, y'all can kiss my white ass. <laughs> um, y'all can catch me about 10 more times before it pays off to, to, to buy tags. But yeah. Anyway, that's how stupid our government is. But anyway, beyond that, yeah, guy like just lowballed the shit out. Like, I was like, are you kidding me? Because the whole thing is, and I don't want to get too deep off in our tax system in Tennessee. In Tennessee, we pay a lot of sales tax. It's, I guess, what we do to not pay income tax. It's all theft. But, yeah. Um, so really, if you trade, and that was my parents' thing, they wouldn't sell me the truck because they needed to trade it in so that they would only pay sales tax on their new one on the difference. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, it makes sense. And so I was the same way. I was like, well, I can trade this one in. And I went, took it to the dealership where we're going to trade it or could have traded it um, where we're buying the other truck. I was like, what will you give me for it? And of course, they didn't give me, want to give me shit. And I was like, all right. I was like, I think I can do better enough just selling it for myself. To, but at the same time, I needed to do significantly better than that trading. First guy, like, or it wasn't the first guy. The first guy was the man actually bought it. Great dude. Um, second guy, like, I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, it's like, I'm offering you that. And I was like, I respond. I was like, dude, if I was, if I wanted to, to, to hear some bullshit, I'd turn on CNN. <laughs> and like, he's like, oh, I can't, I buy these trucks all the time. And I'm like, whatever. Like, and I, I and I shouldn't have even engaged. I should have just. Because actually the guy that bought the truck, and he did buy it, and I don't care what he does with it, but he, he says, he's like, no, no, I, I'm going to keep this as a work truck. He buys, he says, I buy and sell a lot of stuff on Facebook. Yeah. He's like, no, no. He's like, when people like, just say something dumbass to you, like, you just don't respond. Like, yeah. Just, just, that's, that's, you have to be disciplined, just don't respond. Because I went back and forth to that guy for a while. <laughs> of course, he thinks it's my wife, and like, I'm giving it, this is a bitch hell. Yeah. <laughs> like, this dude thinks my wife's a total bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but that's no, her dickhead husband. <laughs> But I was like, are you kidding? Like, because I had it listed, and I didn't say it were best offer, but reality, and I took less than what I had it listed for. Yeah. But a hell of a lot more than that guy. I don't know. I, I got way more riled up over that than I should have been. I was like, yeah, Facebook, God dang, man. Oh, it did? I, I, yeah. If I had Elon Musk money, I'd buy it and just shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> that would be actually funny to see, like, a dude so rich that he would just buy social media and just, just shut them down. I mean, the problem is somebody, uh, they'd... You know, another one would pop up. Oh but, yeah, yeah. You know, just be like, yeah, I have a few money, and uh, I'm gonna buy Facebook and just pull the plug. Yeah. Well, all you people are gonna have to go somewhere else to use your all your improper grammar and, and show how big of an idiot you are. You know, airing out all your dirty laundry <laughs> online. So. Well, <coughs> well, I'll tell you, 
the what I was thinking about with in regards to the ag sector. So like this eight R eight R three forty, this tractor that they're leasing, it's a twenty twenty three model or something. It has four hundred hours on it, which is I mean that's a brand new tractor. It's, and it's like that truck with twelve thousand miles. I'm like, yeah, that's a brand new truck. Yes, and yeah. Technically not, but no, to me that's a brand new truck. Yes, yes. And uh, I used it the other day out at the farm store. I had to. I just pulled the turbo till around and uh, turbo tilled some stuff. And oh, dude, the thing is a Cadillac. Like it's a legitimate. It is significantly nicer inside than my pickup. Like it has leather seats, heated and cooled seats, and it has a massaging seat. Like, I'm not shitting. It has a massaging seat. It literally massages from your ass all the way up your back. And it's like, it ain't like a little crappy massage. It, it's like little, like these little balls are like. What, 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 what's the sticker price for those brand new? Well, it's where I'm getting. It's where I'm getting to. So I took a cool picture of it because I'm like, man, you know, while it's here, I got to, I got to like, one, I was like, I got to drive it because it's, it'll do 35 miles an hour on the road. Holy shit. Shit. It is awesome. How often can you actually even do that? I did it the whole way from here going over to, to uh, my farm. Even with the traffic? Oh, the hell yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's, uh, it's narrowed in on like 30s for like what we're doing. But now, you know, if you had one that was on cotton 38s, you know, you'd have a hard time doing that because you just, it takes up the whole road. Unless you're just like F everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have to catch... Now, I mean, there was sometimes, you know, obviously if I'm meeting a lot of traffic, I would, I'd crank it back some, but it's it's like narrowed in enough that, man, I mean, hell, I'd keep running 30 a lot of times, like when I'd meet cars, because if they'd get over a little bit, I could get over a little bit, and I mean, I, shit, I'm so used to driving them, I just hammer down, but uh, yeah, it'll do 35, 34 point something, and uh, it rides like a Cadillac, like it rides good, and, and it's crazy, man, in there... You can even adjust from the cab like how firm the suspension is. Uh, I had I was getting an ass massage while I was driving it over there. Had the cooled seats on, so my ass was cold and getting like you know needed while I'm I'm driving the thing. Uh, it would pull the thirty the turbo till is like a thirty one foot turbo till. Shoot, man, that thing would pull it. I bet you'd pull that thing fourteen miles an hour. Like it, it is just it is bad. It's got LED lights around the cab. This is the Signature Series. So this one out here is probably the most loaded up, fancy one you can possibly get. I'm pretty sure it has both speakers in it. Like I was, oh, I had, I put on some rap while I was out there and it was like, you know, I felt like I was 16 again because it was like, boom, 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 you know, like it had the bass and man, I was getting down in the tractor. I'm like, this thing is so bad. I took a picture of it and I sent it to the the salesman at John Deere and I was like, man, I need one of these. Now, I know I can't afford one of them, um, but I was like, I need one of these. And he said, you do, man. You definitely do need one of them. And he said, what do you think about it? And I said, oh, it's super badass. Like, it's the most badass tractor I've ever been in. And um, I said, it's the nicest damn tractor. And I said, just out of curiosity, I said, there's no chance in hell I could afford it. But I said, I'm honestly just curious. I said, What's the price on this tractor? Because it's not new. This is used. I said four fifty, and he said yes, sir, four hundred fifty thousand for that one with four hundred hours. Yep. So what are they new? Five fifty. I was gonna say it's got to be five. I, I'm just assuming five twenty five is the number that I have. So it, it, when you because I know a lot of people are like, oh, they they put all that extra bullshit on there, it, you know, it jacks the price up. But I'm like, okay. I mean, you can look at it two different ways, but. All right, say it's five twenty-five a sticker price. So, I mean, say it's got fifteen thousand dollars worth of that bullshit on there. Yes, yeah, not the speakers, yeah. the the massaging seat. Like, okay, if you're spending five hundred and ten thousand, you might as well spend five hundred and twenty-five thousand. Yeah, at like, that price, you're not yeah, really worried like you, about you it. You might as well <laughs> pimp that sucker out. Yeah, you know, to the max for another fifteen grand or or whatever extra that adds. I'm sure some people are like, well, if they take all that and trip, you know, strip all that off, it would. Okay, you know, I see. see if it was like a hundred fifteen grand is a lot of money, but when you're talking about spending over a half million dollars, it ain't that it ain't, much yeah. money. If it was like a hundred thousand dollar package difference, then you know, then you could be like, okay, yeah. But no, I that's exactly what I've thought. I'm like, you know, I bet it's not. 
a significant enough amount of money to justify like yeah like you know, I, I want to trim mine down to the not having the massage seat okay well it's still five hundred and ten thousand dollars yeah like, and now you got a shitty seat and your speaker is going to do the like weird like me you know like the the cracking sound like when you get loud oh, hell, i'll tell you and this is this is not even a cool story after that but um just my two Kubotas that are roughly 10 years apart in age. Because I always thought, man, 135 was like, like man, I, I thought that was kind of like a Cadillac. And now my much smaller tractor, but brand new one, or it was new a year ago, like, like man, I just enjoy driving that one so much better. One, the radio works, and it doesn't yeah. work on my old one. I put yeah. an earbud in. Yeah. Um, but just like the seat, like everything, it just, it's still got kind of a new tractor smell to it. I'm like, yeah, like I really enjoy driving that smaller tractor better, and and it'll go a whole lot faster. On well, that. dude, that's that is one thing I I will I like, got it. You, you don't realize how <clears throat> much really changes in that small time span, because uh, well, like you have eighty four twenty. Yeah, I mean that when that tractor came out, it was the oh yeah, baddest, you know, I mean that that was the John Deere row crop top of the line track yeah you know, those 20 series yep that was an 80 that was an that's an 04 or 05 model yeah and uh it's crazy to think that was 20 years ago <laughs> it is crazy to think like I'm still in the camp when someone's like a yeah I got a 2012 I'm like oh damn near brand new and then I'm like oh shit no that's 12 years old shit yeah. uh, yeah. but no that I'm a 100% and and here's the thing like because I I'm my group on Facebook that I got the small and beginning farmers thing. It's it's gotten really big, but there is a bunch of guys that run old equipment, and there's a lot of guys that comment on there, and they'll and one of their things is they they're like, we don't need these guys don't need these new tractors and all this stuff. I stick with my old ten sixty six International and fifty four eighty eight or forty seven sixty John Deere's, and that is fine. That that's fine. But like I'm just gonna tell you. It's it is a difference when you get in one like that case that I had uh, last year. I don't even remember the number now. Eighty seventy one forty. I was about to say seventy one forty. Yeah, that tractor. A box car. Yep, that's a great tractor. Uh, I I could use it right now. I need to pull a disc, but that was a ninety one model or something. I think it was. I can't remember. It was early nineties. My eighty four twenty shits on that thing it was so much nicer like it was just so much it was so much more convenient the controls i never used the clutch in my 8420 like i never used the clutch in that thing you had to clutch it a lot of times in that 7140 and then you get like that 8420 well then let's go let's not even go as crazy as the this 8r like dad's 83 that 8345r they got that's a 2015 2016 model i think um, so that's what eight years? No, twelve years. Twelve years newer than my tractor. The interior of that tractor, the ride, the comfort—it shits on my eighty-four twenty. Yeah, like it, it just and and I mean, man, you know, I know people. There's people that'll be like comfort. You know, they scoff at that, and it's like, dude, yesterday I was in the cab of my tractor. You know, there's days where I'm in the cab of my tractor for 14 hours. Like, you're sitting there for 14 hours. So, honestly, I yeah, the comfort actually does matter to me. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, and I'm not just working 100 acres. Like, it's not like I'm putting, I'm sitting in the seat all day for a week. I'm sitting in the seat all day for, like, two months. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, and it just comes down to, you know, right, now, smaller operations can't afford to buy a half million dollar tractor like they'll never like i mean well, it, like there's zero chance that that ever pencils out um no yeah i i well that's i told told the dude the dealer i said uh i said by the time i could afford that thing it'd be war slap out and he said he said i'd be wore out trying to make those payments and i said dude i would too and and i where i was going I mean, that, with that cost m- like not just more than my home like significantly like i i'd have to think like it might cost that might that, that's that's right there in the range of costing more than my home and the 80 acres that my home <laughs> resides on you know it's yeah. built on like yeah and when you think about it that way you're like 
All right, you can have an 80 acre block of ground with a nice home, or you can have this depreciable asset. Yeah. Like, because that's the other thing about it. Like, it, oh, it's, it, yeah. it's a depreciable asset. Like, like it's a no brainer. They're like, yeah, give me the land and the home. Like, yeah. you're not even talking about a, just some land. Like, well, your your notes on like that tractor out there, if you bought it, would be around ninety thousand dollars a year, and that's where I'm just like, my God Almighty, man! Like more money than the vast majority of Americans bring home in a year. Tw- yeah, tw- twice as much money is what the vast majority of Americans <laughs> bring home in a year. Like yep. that is, yeah, that's, that's what just your note before you even start. I mean. Uh, that's a tiny part of your inputs for that year yeah oh yeah that, that's, that, that doesn't put any fuel in it that doesn't pay for the wages of the man that's going to drive it i'll give it. you reference for for a comparison reference because my 8420 uh is not paid for it's close but it's not quite paid for yet so here's the difference if let's say if i my 8420 what i have now so the eighty, the eight R three forty ninety thousand dollar note. My eighty four twenty, uh, I think it's an eighty five hundred dollar note. So, I mean, that's that's light years apart. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that is literally light years apart. A tractor that basically can do the same thing. My eighty four twenty can do everything that tractor can do. Now, the the only thing that one has a little more horsepower, but in all honesty, if I if I felt I needed more horsepower, being that I'm a smaller operation, I can't afford a tractor like that. There is tunes for tractors, and there's a black box you can put on them. You could crank up my 8420. I think is pushing around 295 horsepower. I could probably crank her up to about. I could probably get it up to about 400 horsepower if I really wanted yeah. to. Yeah. So, um, you know. If if that's the thing, if horsepower is your your drive and you've got a tractor, you can tune it up. I did just put freaking front tires on that tractor. That that set me back um, on my eighty four twenty. About two hundred fifty bucks a piece. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There were and they're Firestones because I I went through a spell of just buying the cheapest tire I could, and I've had two blowouts on my planter. And I was going down Highway 51, headed to Covington last week, and had a blowout on Highway 51. And it was my inner inner tire on my planter. And it blew out. And that outside tire is just just screaming. Like, man, I can see it squatted. And I'm like two miles from my field. I slowed down to 10 miles an hour because I I heard it pop while I was in the tractor. And I said, oh, shit, what is that? And I looked back there, and I said, damn, I could see the tire. And I said, son of a bitch, I'm, I'm on Highway 51. If that thing had blown, if that other Four tire... Four-lane state highway for those that aren't right. Yeah. Yep. Like, bu- busiest road in the county. Yeah. Yes. And and I, I was by myself, because I'm by myself most of the time. If that other tire... Because the way these planters are made, it's got, it's got two tires on the right side, two tires on the left side. There's a spacing of about two foot between the tires yeah. like to in the pairs and then there's probably a four foot spacing between the pairs if i explain that right but the planter is really i mean it's heavy and if that other tire had blown the planter would literally just fall over and i mean hell man i've seen guys turn these planters over yeah. and so that's all i'm thinking about i'm like god please let me get this thing to the field luckily i got it to the field but but uh, ronnie uh, the tire man, Ronnie Edwards, he's he's the man. Uh, I called him and I was like, dude, I got a, I've had a damn blowout on Highway 51, and uh, he was like, oh man. And I said, I I got to the field. He goes, what kind of tire you want? And I said, man, I don't know. I don't want any more cheap ones because this was a cheap tire. I had already had the other one replaced because the other cheap tire blew out and it blew out around the bead. And so he said, man, I, I'll see what I can get. He called me back and he said, I can get a Firestone for it. And he said, but it's high. And I said, I don't give a shit. I was like, I'm not, I'm done with these. I said, I'm on the road by myself often. So I can't have breakdowns on the road. And so he was like, all right, well, then I, I plant. And then I, my, my right front tire was, it was really wore out. I get off the tractor and I'm doing something. And I hear something going, and I look and I can see 
water bubbling out of the front tire on the right side. And I, I'm like, crap. Which it, and, and I got water in the tires. So I just called Ronnie back and I said, I need, I need you to come put two front tires on. He was like, what kind do you want? And I said, I don't want a cheap shit on here. And so he called me back the next morning. He said, I got you. I can get you two Firestones, but they high as hell. And I said, I don't even care. <laughs> I said, I, I, I just need good tires. So slap some Firestones on it. What do you think they were a tire? So on the front. Yeah. So they're not as big. I don't remember the, I don't remember the specs, but yeah. Mm. 2500 a tire? Oh, no, man. Yeah, you would have been pleasantly surprised. They were 1500 a tire. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, 1500 a tire. Um, yeah, you know, in the grand scheme of things, which how big of a tire is that on the front end of a tractor? Uh, that's a 48, 420, 80 or 30 or 420, 90 or 30, I think. Okay. I don't know. What R30. I, I'll, well, the rim's 30. Yeah. I don't know. Dimension of that tire, what is that, a is it a, I mean, fifteen hundred dollars is a lot of money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that a forty something inch tire? Probably. What, what does a, a rear tire cost for one of those suckers? A Firestone would probably be around twenty five hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And see, I put some Maxims, which is a cheaper tire on the back. Which now I'm glad because you know then I ran through all that stuff and it punched all the like all that stuff stuck in my tires. Yeah. So they're they're fine. They're holding up right now. But if it would have been some like real high dollar ass Firestones, I would have I would have been drinking like a fish that night, just drowning my sorrows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I can. I was just thinking because like you you can spend three or four hundred dollars on a tire for a pickup truck, oh, like without a problem. My my truck, I got. Which this is one thing that's always kind of annoyed me. On my pickup, I've got. I got 37s on that truck, and then they're 22-inch rims. And so what always has kind of annoyed me is the bigger the rim, the higher the tire. But I'm like, but you're paying for less rubber. Yeah. So oh, it's, yeah. it's always kind of annoyed me, which I know they say, well, it's the specialty of the tire because it's having to be big. But I'm like, but that doesn't make any sense. I'm actually I'm getting less tire for my money. Like I'm getting a less tire. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're getting less actual material. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's always irked the crap out of me, but yeah, tires for my truck are probably five hundred dollars a piece. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at putting like some specialty tires on my Jeep. Um, uh, remember the old Thorn Birds by Super Swap? Oh yeah, yeah. For some reason, I've always thought those looked mean as hell. Are you going to put those on the Jeep? You know. Interco or whatever who makes Super Swapper, yeah, like they're they're going through like a like redoing their warehouse or something because I don't want to have to put like a lift or anything, so I want to buy what would for that type of a specialty tire would be one of the smaller ones they make. Yeah, like I don't know, I just want to be able to. I'd like to buy a new set of tires and rims that way I could swap them out. You're gonna get stuck in some thorn birds. Well, I've always heard people kind of shit on them, like they're not really that good of an off road tire. They're good for sand. Okay. Put like some boggers on it. That's what you need to put on there. <laughs> that that would be ridiculous. <laughs> That's what you need to put on there. Thorn birds are terrible in mud. Well, and and, and I'm but not they look, look awesome. And I'm not. That's my thing. Like they look cool <laughs> as they, hell. They do. I'm not looking to actually put it. I mean, like I I get in the mud, like going out and check cows. But yeah. I'm not like going to go like mud bog. All right, y'all heard it here first. Bobby Lee's going to be calling me because his ass is going to be stuck in some slicked over thorn birds. You know, and, and I will probably regret saying this. Cause, and again, I do not like set out to off road that Jeep, <laughs> but like I take it places that it probably shouldn't go. Just checking cows. I mean, it's my side by side. Oh yeah, especially yeah. when I'm on my other farm because I don't have a. Well, it's uh, cheaper than a, buying a side by side. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what exact conversation I have with somebody. I was like, it is my side by side because I don't have a barn or anything down there to keep one in. Yeah, uh, and or somewhere we won't get stolen. It's like, yeah, I just drive that Jeep because it's great. I drive it down the road, then I drive it wherever I want to. It's got <laughs> air conditioning, heat, and you know, radio. Which I know, hell, a lot of side by sides have all that now too. But yeah, um, but yeah, I bought it for a fraction of the price. You yeah, you didn't pay thirty five thousand dollars, which was some of these guys are paying. Not even close. Yeah, like, but anyway, yeah, and like, I have had that thing close to being stuck to the point where like I'm like, oh shit, I'm stuck. Then I just keep. I suck are her. you putting thorn birds on it? If I can find some, <laughs> I, I, that's what I want to do. Um, <laughs> I have yeah, always I feel loved like, the looks like of I'm them. I feel like I'm 18 again. Yeah. 
Dude, just put dude, some boggers on there. It's kind of a nostalgia thing. You know, boggers look mean as hell. Like, I've never, like, because I was all, like, when I was in high school, like, we'd buy, like, the, I don't know what was the four-wheel off-road magazines. and like, Yeah. For some reason, I've always thought the thorn birds look just mean as hell. They do. They do. But the, the bogger was like the bulger is almost i mean it's a tractor tire yeah it just truck. looks sick the one that i really like i would be scared to death to drive that thing like on the highway oh it's like, probably like especially brrr. like in a in a like blinding rainstorm like i can't <laughs> imagine that thing gets good track have you looked at the mud grapplers nitto mud grapplers those were a badass tire yeah and that's nitto's well that, that, in that jeep you know too i, I mean i just well, we'll know when run, you're coming. I'll run, hear that run, 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 on the road. Run around town in it. Yeah. yeah. But. Man, yeah. No, it looked it look good with thorn birds. Especially you need to throw about an eight inch lift on it. We'll put some like 35 inch thorn birds on yeah, it. I don't want to do stuff like that. You like, know, I, I got a motor in the shed. I got a, a 5.3. We'll just do a swap, mm-hmm. motor swap, put you a 5.3 in there. Yeah. Well, hey, we could have a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can, man. You can have a lot of fun with the Jeep. Um, all right, you want to queue up our man? Our man. Getting ready for his big debate. Yeah. Not yeah. his date. Getting ready for his big debate. I got a, oh, I got a good company. I got, and actually, the guy listens to the show that oh. has company here. So, it's important. That is like, like a triple whammy. It is. Damn it, where are you, Joe? <laughs> same, <laughs> same problem he has every day. We are just... <laughs> Let me start off with two words. Made in America. All right. Have you ever... I, I'm pretty sure I've not done this company. And I actually... I'm I'm kind of surprised I haven't done this company. But it's something I've used quite a bit. And again, you know, we always mention like everything we... If we recommend a product, we've tried the product, we've used the product. Like I got my... Well, I don't have it on right now, but I wear my Mac belt every day. Um, yeah. But clean eats you ever used any bought anything from them i don't guess so so don uh he owns clean eats met him at winter strong and uh dude it they they got these they're frozen meals and i have tried quite a bit of these and they're 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 like lean healthy lunch or dinner meals whatever you they got an extra protein versions that's usually what i buy the xp kind that they have they're like they're high protein and uh you know look if you're like me a lot of times your lunch is kind of like fast or you you just got to find something you just literally stick these in the microwave for like two minutes three minutes yeah and they're good i mean they're legitimately good like i'm not so so they ship it to you yep they ship it to you they're on dry like uh they got i don't know if it's dry ice but they're in like a frozen package thing you can you build like little kits. Uh, I was looking here. They got the like this. I'll tell you a few of them that I really like. The buffalo chicken mac and cheese is really good. Uh, there was a Philly cheese steak something that can't find on here now as I'm trying to look, but it's in here. I'm in like the build your meal plan. I have yet to get anything that I just didn't like. Um, everything is really good. There's a, a chicken and waffle fry nachos. I even like that. And they're the waffle fries are like sweet potato fries. So like it's it's healthy for you. But dude, everything is legitimately good. And I just want to preface like I, I want to continue to make sure that I'm saying like I'm not I'm I'm not blowing smoke. And I've got a puny little gut. And so like a lot of stuff will upset my stomach. I've not had upset stomach off of their stuff. They even got a good breakfast bowl. It was like a skillet queso uh, type thing. Like they have, they got a shredded beef stuff that is really good. So Clean Eats, Google Clean Eats Kitchen, and it'll pull up like where you can go to buy all their stuff. Is it Clean Eats with a Z on the end? Yes, yeah, Clean Eats with a Z. Uh, and like I said, Don, and, and Don. It's, like, it's want me to select like my local cafe. Like. Yeah, you're not on the kitchen. Go back. Go to Google and type in. Be sure when you look. Let me tell you. Actually, I'll tell you on the website. It's it's cleaneatskitchen.com. Uh, clean eats with the Z. Cleaneatskitchen.com, all one word. Uh, I I highly encourage you to check them out. Especially, you know, you're trying to be healthier. Okay, yeah. Did you it find specifies it? specifies delivered now. Yeah. That, 
and they have a ton of options. They even had a, these empanadas. I bought some empanadas kind of for a snack. It was like a beef and cheese empanada, chicken and cheese empanada. They were freaking good. I mean, like I've let Marcy try stuff, and even and she's like, these are good. So I mean, they're they are legitimately good. Don's a good guy. Don has actually gotten into farming. He's uh, I mean, he's Don's an entrepreneur. He was a bodybuilder, entrepreneur, and uh, he's man. This company he started. It, him and his wife started this company. It's like a Fortune 500 now. I mean, they've really exploded. Really? The the thing you had pulled up was there. They have physical locations like where you can go and eat at the clean eats, um, but the kitchen is where they'll they'll send the food out. Okay. So Don's good dude. Uh, I know he listens to the show from time to time, and so I highly recommend clean eats. And I bought a little heating thing that I can actually plug into a cigarette lighter, and that's what I've been. My my intention is to take it put it in the tractor and plug it up and like actually kind of heat mine up in the tractor. So yeah, man, this stuff looks really good. Dude. It, I, I mean, honestly, I've not had anything that wasn't good on there and I do like the XP. Well, they, they, they do. They do have some chicken recipes. Yep. I'm sure I think worth a shit, but, <laughs> um, but um, l- lots of beef though. So there is lots of beef. So they do have some good options. The shredded beef is actually really good. They got a, I can't remember what the Philly cheese steak one is. I could look on there and find it, but there's a Philly cheese steak type yeah, thing. This breakfast stuff. This hash brown stack. Is that the one with the queso or skillet? Is that? No, it's hash browns with an omelet and gravy. Okay, I was gonna it's say not, does not sound healthy. <laughs> yeah, they're well, they're they're good. Like if you go to them and read them like that, they're they've got the health specs on there. Oh yeah. That was Don's thing, man. They they wanted to make good clean food that you could eat. A lot of a lot of my buddies kind of in the athlete sphere. This is their kind of their go to for lunches and stuff. Yeah, and you can look like if you're like me, you know, and try to watch carbs. A lot of these, yeah, have really. I mean, I think they have keto friendly, like a oh, yeah. whole section on keto. Well, yeah, some of these bowls you can buy. It's just shredded beef. Yeah, <laughs> like you just. You can buy the yeah the meat and basically build your own meal plans. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 they do have some keto ones here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, check them out. Um, cleaneatskitchen.com with cleaneats with the Z kitchen.com. Uh, they're an American company, American dude, a good dude. And like I said, Don is, they're getting into the agritourism realm. So he's, uh, he's a really good guy and uh, can't recommend the, the company enough. Yep. Which while you're, while you're eating your clean eats, um, you know, breakfast, dinner, lunch, whatever. You, you know, you need to be scrolling on agzaka.com. Yeah. Um, what is this? They got an announcement coming up. Yeah, th- they do have something big coming. I, I don't know what it's it is. It's the thongs. I'm like, I'm, you know what? That, that's what it's got to be. It's got to be the I thongs. Like, they, need to, they need to give us, you know, we're kind of insiders. Like we're. I know. We're, yeah, we're, we, we're, yeah, come like, on. Like Jared is our bro. Yeah. Um, they need to talk dirt to me logo on the thong, the like. I don't know what they call but the yeah, parts they, they of the They kind of teased something on social media the last few days, like <laughs> something, they have a big announcement coming. Yep. I bet it is that now they've got thongs. With the Talk Dirt to Me logo. Thongs. Like, and when I'm talking about thong, like, I'm, I'm talking a man thong, of course. You know, yeah, of course. Smell banana hammock. Um, Keep you cool in the summertime. You know, I mean, yes, something something like that has got to be what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I am curious to see what it is, which... They're adding stuff, I feel like, all the time. They are. There. And, and Jerry kind of teased us when he was back here back in February that over the next year, like, that's a lot of what he's been doing on these farm shows. It's not so much to promote Ag Zaga, but for them to pick up additional products yep. for them to be selling. So they're adding new stuff all the time. Um, check them out. Cool thing about it, doesn't matter what you buy, if it's something new, if it's the, or if it's the bale twine, net wrap, stuff they've been selling. Commodity forever. jugs. Yeah, get dude. You use that code. You get ten percent off no matter what. Talk dirt, all caps, all one word. And it, and I'm telling you guys, it it actually look. If you are a, a dedicated listener of the show, you've been with us for a while. It really helps us because, and I'll explain why real quick. When you use the code, that shows the company. Wow, these guys are a valuable asset. Like their listeners yeah. are using their code because they obviously yeah, th- th- can see that. This ad money we're paying them or sponsorship money, 
is, is we're getting return on that investment. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. Y'all need to y'all need to use the code, get your stuff on there, and uh, yeah, that's a that's about. Oh, I want to recommend a book real quick as we're finishing up. All right. I think I saw you put this on social media, dude. Yeah. Uh, man, I actually I actually cried in the tractor the other day. Man. This and it was about a dog. Like Okay. Well I definitely have a soft spot there. You do, that's why I threw that in there. Like look, I, I like I kinda pride myself. I feel like uh, you know in the movie Braveheart, he cries like I think one time and then he never cries again or something. Like I kinda pride myself in being like Braveheart, like I don't cry. But man, I I was William Wallace. <laughs> yes. I was in the tractor and Derek, damn you for recommending this book to me. But uh, no, it's a great book. I I actually was asking him, like, just, you know, military. I was never in the military, but I want to understand PTSD. You know, we see these veterans kill themselves, and it's like, literally, they say 22 a day. And I was like, man, what is the deal? Why? Why does this happen? And, and so he recommended this book called uh, Touching the Dragon. It's by James. Uh, let me get his last name right. Uh, James James Hatch Touching the Dragon and Other Techniques for Surviving Life's War Wars This is not your like typical he's, he was a Navy SEAL but it, he's it's not your typical like you know like kicking the door in Navy SEAL book action packed there is a lot of action and that like it's a it's been a really entertaining listen I'm a little over halfway through it at this point but man, I just got to tell you this. Uh, yesterday, I was in the tractor. I was listening to it, and I'll tell you this one little part. And uh, man, he uh, this all true story. And he's he has a canine, and it's uh they're a Belgian Malinois because they're in war, and that's what they that was kind of their thing. Maligators is what we call them. <laughs> Maligators. Well, he had one. His name is Spike, and. Uh, <laughs> You know these dogs they're they're like crazy impressive and they are a part of the unit as much as anybody else like that's one of the things he made clear they make terrible pets <laughs> just throwing that out there <laughs> if you're a civilian living in town you do not need one leave it to the leave them to the soldiers they, they have a very specific job <laughs> being your pet is not one of them dude well this dog spike has been on this dude with for like i think for a lot of missions he's been with him through the thick and thin and I mean, and the, he was the canine guy over this dog. So I mean, he he took this dog in. At the end of the day, he said he'd put him in the kennel. You know, he told him he loved him, hugged him, checked him out, made sure he was clear of any any injuries. I mean, it was his dog. Like, he loved this dog, and uh, the dog was attached to him all the time. They have like a an attachment to them attached to the dog, and so the dog is with him all the time. The dog like looks at him, and he looks at the dog. They can like read off of each other. And so he literally loves this dog. They, they, he said they're they're going out. They engage an insurgent, and the dog goes. He said he sends Spike out. He said Spike. He said he's sixty five pounds. He said he jumps and he like they call him a fur missile. He said he like launches himself straight at the dude's chest. He said the guy is two hundred and probably two hundred ten, two hundred twenty pounds. He's a pretty big guy. He said. When Spike hits him, the guy just uses his body weight, and he said he falls down on top of Spike. And so he said they're they're on the ground. He said that Spike's going at it, like fighting him. Well, James, the rider, he said, all right. He's like, all right, that's enough of that. So he dispatches the bad guy. He shoots him several times, and Spike gets up, and uh, he said he, he can see. He said the guy is dead over there, and he said Spike is kind of wobbly. He said he don't look right, and they're wearing uh, night vision, so he's kind of everything's a little distorted. But it's, he he can tell something's off. And he said he tells one of his teammates, he's like, "Man, something's up with Spike. I think he might have broke his leg." And the guy's like, "No, nah, bro, he's hurt. He's hurt bad." And so he said he gets over there, and he's checking him out, and he like he said he's breathing real shallow and like fast, like he's not taking deep breaths. And uh, he said he he kind of gets checking him out. And I'll be damned if one of his bullets didn't pass through the guy's body and go into the lungs of his dog. And he shot, he killed his, he kills his dog. He, uh, cause he said he literally, he's like, I pick up my dog and he's like, I put him over my shoulder. And I'm like, 
trying to run him to like the the medevac or whatever and he said i just feel him go limp on my shoulder oh. and i mean i i cried i was crying in the tractor um like it, it's like gonna make me tear up right now because he went all into it like he took him back and he's like you know i every night i'd check him over and he's like this night i still put him in his kennel like normal but i laid him down he just laid there and he's like and i just sat there and there and like watched him and they said i put a i put a flag over him and his paws were sticking out like oh dude it was it was gut-wrenching um and that's how but the book i'm never gonna read the book (laughs) (laughs) i've heard enough already dude you need to read it (laughs) there's no chance (laughs) it is it is like it is the emotional side of war and that's what Derek had told me he's like man this is from a this is from a different perspective man it is I mean I've never had a book have you ever had a book bring you to tears your eyes are almost watery right now (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) like mine man I don't know if I've ever read one that brought me to tears I'm trying to think what would have been the most recent one was it uh, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn I don't need. I, I know I probably did read that one at some point, but it's been so long. Savage ago. Son, James Jack Carr. I don't know if I've ever been brought to tears in any of his. I was being stupid. Yeah, yeah, I don't think there's anything really sad in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're they're, they're savage. Um, <laughs> they are. Yes. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. Oh man, I can I can be brought to tears like. Um, I can think of several stories that I'm like you. I can't. I, I I've been told them by other people or seen them on TV or read them in a book, and I can't retell that story without tearing up. Oh, dude! I, when I got in last night, I was telling Marcy, I was like, I cried in the tractor today, and she was like, What? And I said, Let me tell you this story. And I was like, I was damn near bawling <laughs> telling her the story. I was like, It was. It was awful. It was awful. You so, gotta go read it. It yes. was awful. <laughs> but a great book. It is a great book. Because it gives you a different side, man. Like I, I think I think we we hear the the cool macho side of war, but we don't ever talk about the I mean, man, it's just the the emotional side that comes along with it that the you can't shake, you know? Yeah. So uh definitely always pray for our veterans you know i guess that's what i'll end that with pray for our veterans and our guys that are in right now still serving got a ton of respect for them always appreciative of their service and uh i do recommend touching the dragon it is it is a great book it is very sad but it's a i think it's a good book for a civilian to read because it gives you a perspective that i probably didn't have so there's y'all a sad ending to the episode talking about yeah. <laughs> I knew that would get Bobby Lee too <laughs> the dog <laughs> yeah yeah uh, he did start a foundation in honor of his dog and he talks about like 40 service members actually showed up at like 3 o'clock in the morning to have a commemorative service for the dog so that was pretty cool yeah so yeah alright guys I'm giving y'all a toast cheers see y'all next week Yep, we'll be right here.